receive new digital assets as a result of mining, uh, staking, and similar activities, receive digital assets as a result of uh, a hard fork, uh, disposed of digital assets in exchange for property or services, in which case you would think you might have to report that like on a Schedule D because you had digital assets, you sold them, then you would say the sales price minus the cost, similar to selling stocks, you would think, disposed of digital assets in exchange or trade for another digital asset. So just because you purchased another digital asset, just like if you sold stock and you traded it for other stock, you, there could be a tax implication for it, even though you took the money and bought basically another stock in essence, uh, sold a digital asset or otherwise disposed of any other financial interest in a digital asset. So you have a financial interest in a digital asset if you are the owner of record of a digital asset or have an ownership stake in an account that holds one or more digital assets, including the rights and obligations to acquire a financial interest or you own a wallet that holds digital assets. The following actions or transactions in 2023 uh, alone generally don't require to check yes. So in other words, you might have digital assets and you might be skeptical of saying, well, what does it mean for me to, because I'm not trying to do anything funny here. Uh, I'm just, you know, holding on to the digital assets. So holding a digital asset in a wallet or account, because you haven't sold it, you would think it wouldn't be a tax triggering uh, event in that case. So if you're just holding on to the digital asset, similar to holding on to stocks, when you hold on to stocks, it's when you sell the stocks that you have a tax implication typically because that's when you're receiving money and if the money that you received is greater than the cost of the stock you had a gain which is basically income similarly here if you bought the digital assets with assumedly dollars then now you're holding on to the digital assets which is fluctuating in value with relation to dollars if you sold them then that's when you might have a triggering event for taxes you would think uh, transferring a digital asset from one wallet or account you own or control to another wallet or account that you own or control. So if you're just holding them within a digital wallet, then and you're just transferring them from one to another, again, you haven't actually sold it, you're just holding it in a different wallet, the value has not changed, you haven't, you haven't exchanged the value of the of the asset for something else of value such as dollars or something else. Purchasing digital assets using US or other real currency, including through the use of electronic platforms. So when we purchase the digital asset, like when we purchase stock, usually not a tax triggering event at that point in time, because we're not earning any income when we purchase it. We earn the income on the stocks when we get paid dividends or when we sell them. In this case, we're probably not gonna get paid any dividends, right? So we earn money on it if the value of, of the currency went up after we purchased it. Now, if someone gave us digital assets as a form of payment, then that's when it would be possibly income because instead of getting cash, you got paid in digital assets. And then you have the issue of trying to convert the digital assets to dollars in a similar way as you would with other kinds of currency and that becomes an issue. But if you just took your own dollars, bought digital assets, then you haven't incurred any, any revenue at that point in time. You might incur revenue when you sell them if they went up in value, uh, such as PayPal and Venmo, okay? So how to record digital asset transactions? Uh, if in 2023 you disposed of any digital asset which you held as a capital asset through a sale, trade, exchange, payment, or other transfer, check yes, and use form 8949 to calculate your capital gain or loss and report that gain or loss on Schedule D. So that would be similar to a stock kind of transaction. You bought something, you sold it. So did it go up in value? If it went up in value, you'd have a gain. If it went down, possibly having a loss, which could possibly be good for tax purposes, if not good for uh, the actual uh, investment. So if you received any digital asset as a compensation for services or disposed of any digital asset that you held uh, for sale to customers in a trade or business, you must report the income as you would report other income of the same type for example, W-2 wages on Form 1040 or 1040 SR Line 1 or inventory or services on Schedule C. So if you got paid in the form of, of digital assets, then you can, it's, it's just like if you got paid cash, right? You can't say, 
well, I didn't, it didn't hit my bank account. I just got cash. I'm just going to put it in my pocket and I don't have to report it. Well, that's not how it works. You're supposed to report it, even though with cash, there's not an audit trail. That's still the most risky thing for the IRS and from that. But if you get paid in something else like digital assets, then you still got paid. Now, the question, of course, the problem being, what do you record on the tax return? The tax return is in dollars if you're in U.S. taxes, right? So then the que you have a conversion issue in a similar way as you have a conversion issue if someone paid you in Mexican pesos or something. You can't put that you got a bunch of Mexican pesos on the United States tax return because the tax return is measured in dollars and therefore you have an exchange issue generally. Uh, but it would be a similar thing, similar process like I said, if, if you got paid in something other than dollars, like another currency. So if you disposed of any digital assets by gift, uh, you may be required to file form 709, see who must file and transfer subject to gift tax in the instructions for form 709. So a gift, remember that we have an income tax system and the gifts are kind of interesting because basically uh, the, the government also tried to impose a death tax, right? And that would be like, so if you die, then the government comes and picks your pocket when they roll you over and then and then pick your pockets. But uh, and that's an estate tax, but it's usually for wealthy individuals. Now, when they put in the estate tax, obviously what people do is they say, well, right before I die on my deathbed, I'm going to gift all my money to my to my uh, to my son or daughter, typically. Right. And therefore, I'll be that when I when the when the IRS comes to pick my corpse's bones for money, I won't have any because I gave it all away right on my deathbed. And then the IRS, of course, doesn't like that. So the IRS then said, well, you can't do that. You can't do that. So then they tied together kind of the gift tax with this estate tax so that you have to report gifts that are over a certain dollar amount and so on and so forth. So that uh, so that when you die, your corpse still has the money on it. So the IRS could could come and take it. So anyways, that's a whole nother topic on the gift tax. Uh, but but you have to be aware of that as well.